Welcome to Travel J Space here on YouTube. And welcome to another new, fun, exciting episode of Let's Talk, where we just, we talk. We talk, 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 uh, no games here, no distractions, it's just you and I talking about what's what, <laughs> what's going down um, out in the world. A little different things. We, we usually like to spice it up around here, of course. Always something new to discuss. Um, but for today's episode... <laughs> forgetting my notes now. Mm -mm. That's, that's a bad habit. Can't start that going. Um, heck no. Cannot. Um, I wanted to actually talk about uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Today's episode is about Michael Jackson. And um, I just feel like... I know it's just random. It kind of came out of nowhere. Michael Jackson. <laughs> um, but I, I just feel like it's a very important topic to discuss um you know not to say that michael jackson is just a topic the, he's a man he was a man and he was an incredible uh legend that we all a lot of us anyways well yeah i guess all of us have had the privilege to live in the same lifetime as um yeah i just i think about him a lot lately and I was always a huge fan when I was young, when I was like 12 and 13, 14, all the way through uh, middle school and early high school that I was completely obsessed with him. And I mean, like I, <laughs> some of y'all are like, oh, I remember, <laughs> but um, I used to actually, I used to actually wear the same outfits he did to school I would dye my hair black and you know do the 2000s hairdo the invincible era haircut um, you name it it started with the bad era I had my <laughs> already short hair permed uh, just before grade 7 graduation and I didn't realize how high the curls would go up so it was kind of thriller going on and then uh, I ended up buying these clip-ins that were curled and put them all in and had the one jerry curl in the front and did my eyeliner like his and you know got the pictures did the thing but I just yeah I couldn't do it I couldn't carry it on it was just too much and, uh, but I went to school like that. I went to school like that for a while and uh, kept it up. You know, it was something that I was just, I was proud to be a Michael Jackson fan. And I didn't care what anyone said. And of course, at that time, I was already getting some slack and being bullied. So being called names and, and stuff like that. So it added a lot of fuel to the flames, but you know what at that point it was kind of like yeah well I got Michael on my side so he he to you and <laughs> I don't need that and I don't hear that and it was like Michael was was teaching through his music just through his prof uh, his his perception and his philosophy who he was and sorry no through his perception and his philosophy teaching how to get through and get by in this world and to to do everything with love everything had to do with love love was the main ingredient in everything he did and he would he would teach that in such a way that it got for me it was at the point where it was like I'm not mad at you for bullying me because you just you don't know what you don't know you're ignorant that's okay Maybe one day you won't be ignorant and you'll remember this day, you know, and that was thanks to Michael. And I go to school with my, I bought all these dress shirts, you know, with a white t-shirt underneath. So I had like blue, blue, like uh, the way you make me feel. And I had the red, red to do uh, uh, blood on the dance floor, 97. Oh, I, ugh, every, everything was Michael Jackson. I ordered 
the uh, the cast, the white cast he would have down his arm during the Dangerous Tour, and I think he wore it at the Super Bowl performance, halftime, 93. Can't, uh, can't be too sure. And also the tape, I went out and bought medical tape, and every morning I would put medical tape on certain fingers. And people at, at school would say, oh, what, why are you wearing that? Are you hurt? Are, are you damaged? Or <laughs> are you damaged? <laughs> Are you, did you do something? And I'd say, no, this is just, Michael Jackson wore these. It's like, de de uh, it it's accessory, you know? And even teachers would come up and say, did you cut yourself? Are those cuts? And I'd say, no, no. <laughs> they're just, they're just um, pieces, you know, part of the outfit. <laughs> so no one really understood that I was in growing up in a small, small, small rural country town, there was a very small handful of people that understood my references and in my fashion and, uh, you know, my symbolism and stuff like that and my profound uh, dedication to Michael and everything he stood for. I was just, I ate him up. I ate him up. And it was great because as a, in hindsight anyway, is thinking like, you know, when I was a kid, there were so many, thinking of all the other influences that were floating around at the time um, that were becoming more popular just in the moment, you know, for, for kids and stuff. I'm very grateful that I, for me, it was, uh-uh, I don't want any of this or that uh, stuff. I want Michael Jackson. <laughs> and I was gravitated there and I never left there and that was my place. That was... None of my friends were really, except for Jess, my good friend Jessica. She and I were Michael Jackson fans, just stood by everything he said and everything he did to the very end. Her and I were like obsessed, obsessed. And she'd put on the little green dress and we would do Michael Jackson experience in the closet, the dance, oh my gosh. And we loved it, we loved it. His music was magic. His inspiration was also magic. Everything he did was magical, you know, and it was inspiring and motivating and would just add a certain, a certain something to your life. Every little bit of what he did was adding to your life. If you were open and you could hear it and you understood it, he was a provider in that way. Um, but yeah. I think going back to Michael as the person and the singer and the, and the uh, oh, pardon me, entrepreneur uh, and deep inspiration that he was and still is to this day, even though he's no longer with us. Um, I just think and I just think it's a real shame he had to go when he did, and uh, I just think of all these long years and and what he still had to contribute when it comes to the musical world, creativity as a whole, and what that means in today's society, what that stands for. Hard work, effort, work ethic, I guess I meant to say there. Work ethic, you know, and effort for sure. Um, so many different aspects of creativity and just, uh, authentic workmanship and, and you know coming up with new things that are not rushed and just a attractive music and lyrics and and things that it seems like in this day and age they're very rare and hard to come by it just seems like everyone's just all in a rut and still releasing things without passion without deeper interest without that click that vibe that that flame that fire whatever it is it's not there and you know that's why I think it's just in hindsight I think wow what a shame that we didn't have Michael throughout the 2010s you know it, it's as it's as though music died when he did truly truly and some people may argue with me on that that's a big statement but I believe it I really do there was a decline when 2010 started this decline and um and, and just music and its and its uh, strength and its powerfulness and the meaning, the effort, uh, just it's sounding good, you know. Uh, 
it's become more about money and greed than it has about art and creativity and uniqueness and standing out. You know, I think Michael would I, Michael would shake his head at that. I think he would just be disgusted by the fact that the music world is turned inside out like that. And uh, yeah, I, I think if he were here though today and he had been through the 2010s, he probably would have done so much, so much that we could not have even comprehended. I could never comprehend or imagine. I think he would have just, he would have just gone above and beyond to help the music industry, to help kids understand music, to, to carry it on to the next generation. And then environmental care, he would have made all of these activists look like complete losers. He would have been the one adult figure of maturity and respect that could have came in and made the changes or helped in that group of chain making change without all these ridiculous, redundant, pathetic protests, you know, of throwing things on classical pieces of art. You know, those stupid kids that threw, what was it, white paint or something all over original Van Goghs and dumping powders and stuff on wax figures of the royal family. I mean, vegans destroying pieces of art and disrupting the piece and throwing plates of steak out from people that are trying to eat at restaurants. That's not how you protest. You're an idiot if you think that is going to cause, it's going to make change. It's only going to make change to your life. It's going to put your ass in jail and good riddance. You're an idiot. They're idiots. They're all idiots. And this is why we need leaders. We need adults. People that have lived longer, that know more, that have the knowledge, that know better, that won't tolerate this crap. And everyone wants to throw out the adults. Everyone wants to throw out the old men and the old women. And they just want to be the spotlight. We can run the world. Of course we can. Oh my God. No, we can't. And no, that generation cannot. Uh-uh. All the yes queens, no. They're, they're, they're not qualified. It is so humbling and honest and respectful and responsible to say, hmm, I can't do this. I have no experience. I don't know how to do this. I want to do this but I don't know where to go, I don't know where to start, I don't know how to make change. Can you help me? Can you help me? That's the biggest thing, the most humblest thing you can do is just reach out and ask for help. Reach out for an adult and ask them, you know? Go through their mind, pick their brain, get their experiences and perceptions and philosophies. They have lived much longer, they can help. They can be there, they can be your support. But I don't think this should be run by a bunch of kids that just live for, you know, drama and sensationalism and live in a world of ego and narcissism and all that other crap and just live it out online and don't actually do anything with their lives. That's, oh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's not how you do it. And, you know, it, don't want to offend anybody but it's kind of the truth I, I believe anyways that's my understanding of it right now um, so back to Michael Jackson see how Michael Jackson has spurred this conversation about uh, social change and, and how going about it and just you know this that and the other when it comes to the world of today and the environment and music he is a leader there you know, and so I just, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm really, I think about him a lot. I never stop thinking about Michael, you know. I mean, it's been 12 years, but it just every day feels like it happened just yesterday. And my love goes so much deeper. You know, I, I also grew up loving LaToya and Janet, you know, and uh, Rebe. 
I loved getting into it and expanding my knowledge. I, you know, I, I, I thought I learned everything I can about Michael Jackson. I've read Moonwalker, the autobiography. I've watched this. I've watched the concerts. I've watched the interviews over and over. I've watched the cute montages of him laughing. I've, you know, this, that, and the other. I have the clothes. I'm doing this. I'm playing the CDs. So where can I go? And I think it, Latoya was the first that caught my eye. I thought, oh, I like your sister. She's spicy. And I read about her. I read her whole story, you know, and, and, which is an incredible story. I think everyone should read her book, Starting Over. It's about surviving abuse and having to reclaim your name and who you are and what that means to you, starting over, basically. And that's the title of the book. So it all comes together. But uh, she has an incredible life. She's led an incredible life. And then there's the music and her styles and I loved it all. I was bopping to all of it and I was going online and finding, you know, Latoya Jackson rare copy of the CD and I ended up collecting all her discography, which costs a lot <laughs> and it was hard to get, but I did it because I just I fell in love with her too. Um, and then I started collecting, I, I kind of uh, directed my collection uh, towards Latoya because I knew everyone collects Michael Jackson stuff. Michael Jackson stuff is worth so much more and I'm just 13 I'm just a 13 year old at the time. So why, why I'm going to focus on your your big sister, your little big sister. Yeah, your big sister and collect that and that'll be my niche. That'll be my little Jackson section that I've got that I'm proud of and I got a lot. I got both her Playboys I got uh, her Playboy VHS, one of them's uh, Wild Adventures or something. Um, I got her Step Up <laughs> Workout VHS, D um, VHS. I got her um, Ebony, was it Ebony magazine where she talks about her mom and, and, the sis and Janet and uh, her new book and stuff like that at the time. I've got her book, um, Living with Latoya, or I can't remember it's from, from the 80s, 90s. Um, yeah, so I mean, like, I have a really good collection there. And, oh, and I've got this promo disc. When she finally came back to the public, I, after finally getting away from her abusive ex, to get back into music, she didn't want to just come out as Latoya Jackson and throw her name out there. She was too nervous. She wasn't ready. I mean, think of it, 10, 10, uh, the 12, 10 to 12 years of abuse and isolation and, and attacks and everything else. You would be nervous to step back out, even if you have a last name like Jackson. So she very coyly just had the name Toy. <laughs> so cute. I love it. And she started having her people hand out just a CD with a single. Just Wanna Dance by Toy. And all that was on it as a symbol was her eye, a monogram of her eye and eyebrow. Gorgeous. And she had them copied and handed out all throughout El, uh, Miami and Florida. And I guess all the clubs were playing it. And people were, and this is 2003, and people are saying, oh my God, who is this? I love her. Oh, her name's Toy, it's Toy, it's Toy. So I just got passed around and she built a lot of popularity that way. Um, and I think, I think this is just incredible. I love the stories. Like there's always really interesting, uh, deep, shocking stories with the Jacksons, but with Latoya, her, her stories are quite incredible. And I was always very gravitated towards her and, and I ha sorry, I meant, I'm missing the punchline. I have one of those CDs. I have one of the promo CDs, one of those limited ones that were passed around in Miami. I ordered it from Miami. It was one that stick or stuck around Florida and I got it and I love it. And well, I have the full starting over album, which has just want to dance on it. But uh, yeah, before I had all our CDs, I was burning them. I had all her collection on burnt discs and then I went, no, this isn't right. This is an, auth an authentic fan. I need the CDs and away I went. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Latoya and I, I feel like we have a very, a very close bond. I feel very close to her because of, you know, being able to understand her story or to put myself in her shoes. And, and I mean, it's actually thanks to her. She's the one who wrote the book and shared her story. 
and that gave me the opportunity to you know understand her and her story and, and who she is and how that's made her who she is and her strength and everything else and I just yeah I think they're just such open-hearted there is such an open-hearted uh, family open-hearted and, and, and open-minded that you can understand them you can relate you're given the openness to hear and listen and go, wow, okay, I, I think I know who you are, you know, maybe not fully, but to an extent that it's kind of nice to have that uh, un unprecedented connection. It's nice. Anyways, yeah, so where am I going? Uh, love the Jacksons. <laughs> love Latoya. I, I'm just going on a little side note about Latoya just because I love her so much. Um, but Michael... You know, he was like a leader. And it's so hard for me in this day and age, actually, even now to watch This Is It, um, which was like documentation of his final concert, or sorry, rehearsals of his final concert that he was going to do in July of 2009 in, at the O2 in London. And, uh, it's I can't watch it I mean I don't know if I could I would be bawling my eyes out uh, the entire time because it's just it's it's like like I said it's just like yesterday it's like he it was just taken from us yesterday and for me anyways and it's very it's very difficult to uh, to see those images of him just giving his all and knowing now in hindsight that the dates of those videos and the rehearsals were so close to his death it just you know it breaks your heart um i actually just finished watching before i started this video and i it was holding me back from recording and because i just couldn't stop crying the waterworks were in, intense and extreme and totally unprecedented because I was not expecting to scroll up to this video um, actually I had just been laughing at a meme above it and I scroll down and it's it's just the scene where he's singing earth song and he's got his arms out and he's just wearing a big puffer jacket he's just very candid very laid back he's wearing his Ed Hardy sweats and uh, and that was the last day he was alive was during those rehearsals <laughs> I don't know it's just so sad to me it broke my heart because <laughs> that scene to know that hours before he died he was singing her song he was just dedicating himself to the earth and changing the earth in a positive way and trying to promote environmental health and all these things that nobody was at that time paying attention to or giving a damn about <laughs> and it just yeah it was very triggering and it was very instant because it just brings you right back to what matters most you know you always say it comes down to love and that's it. that's it everything in life it all comes down to love and that's what he stood for that was his mission that was his his tagline it was just love l-o-v-e love and and then here he is hours before hours before he passes on still just advocating and He was just such a loyal, devoted, noble man that I don't think people, uh, I don't think people fully comprehend and realize his, his ability to inspire and to impress and, and motivate, you know, he's, 
He's some, he was a gift. He was a precious gift. And if you didn't appreciate him while he was here, then it's a shame because so many people trying to destroy him and his good name and his good heart and mind and soul over the years and he never let it get to him he stood strong and his support just doubled each time and he got stronger and stronger and i think that's what the music industry and the big wigs of this world were really petrified about the, the power this man had in his pinky finger to do so much and have such an influence and and i think that intimidated them so they just they just attacked and they they created these circuses around him and scandal and everything else and the poor man just fought through he just said go ahead have your childish fun well i'll let it blow over and then i'll come out with this new album because my fans are important to me <sighs> but anyways uh that clip of him singing Earth Song and on June 25th, 2009 gets me every time. <laughs> um, it's just instant. It's such a trigger for me. The moment it started playing, I just bawled my eyes out because it's, yeah, it's... It's very hard to watch. Yet at the same time, it's so inspiring, and it's just it's beautiful, so beautiful. He doesn't miss a beat when he does when he sings it, and you know he just he gave Earth such a pedestal, such a platform. The cutscenes that were incorporated for that bit, they show it, and they're just they're outstandingly brilliant. They're gorgeous. And he just really reminds you how beautiful this earth is and that we, we can't we can't take advantage, you know? And at this point in time, I don't know, it might be too late. And maybe that's why Michael was taken because the powers that be did not want him, hit him to have to endure and experience all of this crap going on that, that he might have not had the, control, the power to change but probably likely would have tried very hard to do so. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's actually kind of, I, I should end the episode shortly here because I don't really, I talked about everything I think I wanted to, um, but I, I just, um, I wanted to kind of admit <laughs> that the reason why I'm, uh, or this episode wasn't even supposed to be about Michael Jackson, but just before I was about to start filming and saw that clip, I just, I just thought it meant to be that, um, that I saw that and it triggered me and I had a moment and then a couple more moments because I would start going back there and talking about it to myself and there go the waterworks again because it's just such a, oh. but I was saying to myself, forget it, this episode's about Michael Jackson and his magic and his incredible influence and just the beautiful, beautiful man he was inside and out. He was incredible. And we cannot forget that man's name. We cannot forget that man's message and his mission. We cannot forget that man's heart and everything he did for planet Earth and his music and his brilliance. The man is once in a lifetime kind of soul and we are truly blessed and uh yeah yeah that's that's basically all that i wanted to say about michael today i mean i could share all kinds of stories and i could uh okay i'll share one more story actually i do remember <laughs> Uh, Jessica and I, you know, I, I, my good old friend Jessica, and I always reference her, good old friend Jess, and all the episodes and everything else, and I really, really like to have her on Let's Talk one time, I think that'd be cool, um, but we, because we have some stories, we have lots of stories, we go way back, um, so in the way back, I'm talking like 2011, we were on, uh, an online uh, gaming platform called Second Life 
may still be around. I, I, I wouldn't know. And we loved it. We were obsessed with Second Life because you have your avatar and you get to customize it. And there's all these worlds you could teleport to and chat with other people or do your own thing. And it was just immersive, extremely immersive. They had anything you could imagine in there, clothing wise, avatar wise, object wise. You know, you could build your own house that would cost some online, you know, cha-ching. But there are people that like spent money to rent spaces within this world. It was very intense. It was a very intense uh, 3D environment. And we were just youngins jumping in just to screw around and <laughs> have some fun, right? And we were both obsessed with Michael Jackson. So right away I was like looking in the search bar for a Michael Jackson world or somewhere we could visit. And right away, three or four stores. And me and Jess would visit together and we'd be like, hi to the clerk, <laughs> you know, looking for, um, we're just going to browse. And, but meanwhile, me and Jess would be on the speaker version where we could chat to each other while we we're playing. And, um, and she and I would be browsing through the store and, oh my God, you know, I, I, I don't know how many times I asked for my dad's credit card just so I could go and buy, like they had the Michael Jackson avatar and you could pick the era and then the clothes and so I was in heaven I did like I think I, I think I did uh, Billie Jean first the black outfit and then I ended up doing uh, his military ensemble I don't know if it was the red one with the, with the gold anyways and the long hair glasses oh my god and it was great it was just like what I imagined and then I remember Jessica going across and finding the little green dress from uh, Britney Spears' his performance with Michael at uh, Madison Square Garden. And she was so thrilled because that's her favorite, that was her favorite dress, favorite dress. She always wanted that dress so she could have it in Second Life. So we do that. She bought it too. And I got my outfits. And we used to just go everywhere and party. And everyone used to be like, oh my God, like there'd be a whole group of avatars and we would pop up because we just trans tra teleported. And people say, oh my God, Michael Jackson. And then like, I would pull out one of my animations and <laughs> do the dance and people were like, oh my God. Um, but yeah, we used to, we loved it so much. And I just, it makes me laugh because the, the things we used to do. Oh, so there was somewhere I was going with this actually. There was a funny part to this story. Um, yeah, it's escaping my, uh, damaged mine at the moment uh, oh, this is, it was such a good story too Michael Jackson well we used to run there was <laughs> there was times we would run into other Michael Jackson avatars and it would just be like this well there was Michael Jackson worlds we would find Michael Jackson worlds type in Michael Jackson and we'd go visit and peep the, the creativity that people would go through to create like the signs and all the stuff, like there was a roller, uh, amusement park, Michael Jackson themed, music playing, the whole bit. It, it was just, it was really fun. Yeah, so we did that for years. We did that for years, Michael Jackson uh, impersonation, I guess, in a 3D reality based uh, online ga gaming mode. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I ended up buying a lot of outfits, spending a lot of real life money on <laughs> things that I don't even know if I could sign in today and check it all out, but I had bubbles for a while. You get pets, you know, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and then at one point off topic, but then we'll say goodbye. Uh, just, Jess, Jess and I, we, <laughs> We spent New Year's on Second Life one year and because we're too young to drink and we had our sodas and I think we were actually on the phone and then in the speaker, you know, and real like switching back and forth. We used to spend like an hour and a half on the phone and one of our parents needed the phone. So we'd go like through here and then I'd say like, oh, my line's clear. You want me to call you back? So, you know, through the landline. Um, so one year, yeah, we were dressed up. Michael Jackson and she was kind of like Britney Spears. She's like a Britney Spears like fairy with the green dress and long hair and it was like just gorgeous and like the same height as her too so I thought that was really cute um, and uh, 
we had these costumes in our inventories. So sorry, let me let me explain the setting here. There was we were invited uh, through a group we used to go to. There was like dance parties, so we'd go to these dance parties over the months, and the same ones go to, and the different venues, and they'd say, "Hey, nice to see you, Michael Jackson and uh, Pop Doris. Nice to see you again. Come dance." and we check in with them and make friends. We literally make connections, be like, hey, so how was da da da? And so yeah, it was a pretty immersive world. Um, so these people got invites to an all-star concert event for New Year's and then we got it forwarded our way. So we were like, yeah, of course, we're not doing anything. Like our parents will be drinking and we'll be partying. So yeah, let's do it. And because we were just big nerds and we just loved our lives. So <laughs> we went ahead and went to this concert and there's the stage and there was a lot of people kind of mingling in the front doing their dance chatting with one another and people were like oh michael jackson oh my god and there was a beyonce there there was a tina turner there was uh i think there was a britney as well i remember there being a britney uh a jay-z it was pretty intense david bowie there was a lot of celebrities there that night um <laughs> celebrities there that night <laughs> so just before the show started i remember Justin. and i'm like okay i was going we we're going through our inventories and seeing like what kind of crazy costumes we had and we had kinder egg costumes <laughs> big giant kinder eggs and it like covered your body so i was like okay put your kinder egg costume on i want to see what backstage looks like or who's performing so let's like incognito storm the stage so we ran to the back and we jumped on stage and we glitched a bit so we were like stuck together and moving around and i think we were pushing the performers and then there was an announcement message like could the kinder eggs please get off the stage <laughs> oh, i'll never forget that i will never forget i was dying of laughter for 10 20 minutes and so was jess and we just Oh my god, we got up right away in the midst of our laughter and took our costumes off, but man, it was the funniest thing. We did not stop laughing, probably until the show actually started. Oh, it was so funny, it was just so innocent. We were just trying to like, you know, incognito, just kind of sneak around and who is this Beyonce playing, is, you know, who's playing? So. Yeah, that was funny. I'll never forget that. Or there was a command we had. If you typed an MJ in the chat, we would explode into like all these little pixelated squares of Michael Jackson's face. And if you just kept typing it in, it just like flood the room. And people would be like, ah, why is Michael Jackson flooding my space? I can't see anything. <laughs> and you'd run out. You'd run out from the bubble and turn around and be like, oh my god, there's just a huge cloud of Michael Jackson's face and hearts and oh. Yeah, there was a few ways we knew how to annoy people too. <laughs> we were little we were little troublemakers, little shits, little cyber troublemaker shits. We really enjoyed putting up a good stink with people and kind of bugging people a little and just we were having fun. We had, we we loved doing that. That was that was fun for us, you know. Um, <laughs> and I still can't for, I can't forget any of it. There's there's many memories I have, and it all comes flooding back. But those two for sure, the Kinder Eggs and the Michael Jackson pixels. Oh jeez, we we were we were rightly banned from a few different uh, venues and and places to teleport to yeah that's for sure <laughs> but we did it no regrets no regrets no regrets i should go see actually a second life something <laughs> it's been around since i guess 2007 2008 we hopped on in 2011 so uh, who knows who knows good times though good good times well anyways folks that uh that does bring us to the end of our episode of let's talk today uh, I hope maybe if you're not a big Michael Jackson fan or you're kind of like him ha huh, or whatever that maybe this episode has given you some encouragement and influence to want to go and, and dig up some more information and get to know the man behind the music and the music in front of the man and everything else in between. Uh, I really hope it does because he's a great, he's just an incredible man. I can't stop saying that. That's like everything 
about this video is just praising Michael Jackson because he's a he's a god. He's incredible. Um, so yes, thank you guys for dropping on by. I love you guys so very much. You guys are incredible, and I am very grateful and appreciative for. Uh, you guys taking a little time out of your day to spend with Travi J. I appreciate that. Um, and you know what? The pleasure is all mine. I love to do this. I love to share this. A uh, little, little, you know, I like to share. <laughs> what am I saying? I like, I'm really happy to, to be able to share this experience with you guys. That's something I've always wanted to create this space where we can just come together for a moment and have some thought provoking moments and you know and, and uh, talk a little philosophy a little bit this and that you know we do a lot of just randomness here at, at, on Let's Talk so everything's always a little different than the last episode I mean just because a topic is the topic of the video doesn't mean we'd stay there you know we go around it to we connect other pieces and, and bring together some perception and enlightenment around the topic and that's why I love let's talk and that's why I love my brain because <laughs> I go there hey wait a minute you know bring it in and uh, connection um, yeah so thank you for tuning in and I'll see y'all in the next episode toodles for now ta-ta out till next time howdy folks did you like that video well then why don't you go ahead and give that thumbs up a smackaroo don't want to miss out on the next episode give the subscribe button some love and make sure to turn your notifications on that way i can give you a bell a ring let you know when it is served still need more to chew on take a bite of my new youtube instagram account at travi j space to keep up to date with the channel's inner workings and news of upcoming projects and episodes Thanks for watching. See you next time.